Hey, what's going on guys? This is your boy from the side, the Bengal Dragon. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter, Tan Tigers, if you want to hit that bell notification button. I'm here to give you my thoughts on the first ODI between Bangladesh and Zimbabwe. And just, if you're wondering what I thought about the test match, um, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Mushrik Rahim getting his second double century, I'm not surprised. What I also what I was surprised by though is the lack of form of Tommy McBall. And he, boy, that guy needs to really focus. Even after this ODI, he needs to really focus and think about like you know how he's going to move forward and get out of this rut. Because you at least expected a fifty in this match from Tommy McBall. Like, let like people like let's say Mushrik Rahim. He got out trying to be cute. That's not usually his style. But Tommy McBall got out LBW. That is... And he took a review on that. I'm sorry to jump the gun a little bit, but... He took a review on a very plum LBW decision. I mean, I don't know what the doubt was. I mean, he, he had his front leg right, let's say, in front of off. And the ball and the ball hit him, hit him, I think, like towards the inside of, of his front leg. But anyways, getting to this match, um, first of all, hats off Litton Das, you know. And I'm a bit uh, disappointed that he got injured the way he did. He's starting to pull cramps, and this is one thing I have noticed in Bangladesh cricket. Whenever, generally. When a Bangladeshi player plays a long innings, a good amount of time they times they get cramps. Maybe time to look more vigorously at the fitness regimen and the fitness uh, program, and look at the player fitness as you know, like you know, fit, players fitness overall, because a lot of other bigger nations are are more uh, uh, like you know prominent cricketing nations. Uh, you have an Australia, you have a New Zealand, maybe you even have an India and whatnot. India definitely. So I don't see this when you're closing in on a hundred, you're starting to get a cramp. I don't see this scenario too many times and that frequently though. But yeah, hats off to Lilton Kumar Das for uh, for us, you know, basically essentially an unbeaten one twenty six. You know, topping his best score. It was a it was a long time coming, so hopefully he can solidify that number two spot, you know that opener spot that you know you had a bit of musical chairs you know being played with that like I believe it almost or maybe surpassed like a, a phase of England where instead of one opening pair they kept changing two opening pairs and they had eleven or twelve people in one season or something. Something ridiculous like that over a year or something ridiculous like that. So yeah. Um, the Zimbabwean bowlings here, I will here's where I will tell Bangladesh not to be complacent. The Zimbabwean bowling was very, very bad. i I'm sorry, I'll have to say this. Like there was it was lack of pace, the line was not good, way too many short balls. It's and like I didn't see a plethora of drop catches that I can remember but yeah the Zimbabwean aerial fielding was passable was 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 you know all right their ground fielding I didn't like you know I saw bits and pieces of it because come on this match comes up at 2 a.m eastern time in the United States okay and I'm in the east coast so there's only so much I can watch but yeah and uh the fact that with that bowling, Tommy McBall could not make a big score. Hopefully, second match, he proves all of us wrong. And he starts to recover. Like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, one good innings will not wipe the slate clean. You have to have consistent performances. And let this be a lead up to the ODI that we're going to play in episode 3 of our tour of Pakistan. Okay, apart from that, uh, Mohammed Saifuddin, it was good to see him, like, you know, do some, do some power hitting. Mohammed Mitten, 
he showed promise with that uh, with that down the order fifty. Muhammadullah also like you know he he played passably enough. Mushfiq Rahim like I said you know got out like you know trying to be cute. Otherwise like you know he actually uh, is a better player than that. So that's it for the Bangladesh batting. They took advantage of some very bad bowling of Zimbabwe. Rightfully so, they took an advantage. And I was hoping that uh, Litton Das could break Tamim Iqbal's uh, one... Was it 154 he made against Zimbabwe? Yeah, break that record against Zimbabwe. Okay. Coming to the Bangladeshi bowling. First of all, congratulations to Mashafi Motaza. I believe being only the fifth person in the history of ODI cricket or in the history of cricket to have taken yeah maybe it is ODI cricket to have taken a hundred to have taken a hundred wickets as captain obviously that pack led by Wasim Akram you know the great Wasim Akram okay but it was good to see all the bowlers back in form Taitul Islam actually might be a decent uh, left arm spinning option because I think it start you have to start fading him in if you're not going to bring in uh, any prominent any other prominent replacement who's going to be our left arm spinning option given that Shakib Hasan is not around right now and even if Shakib Hasan is around you need like you know you need another backup left arm spinner you can't have. Because when you have Shakib Al Hassan, the lone left arm spinner, it puts a lot of pressure on him to deliver as a spinning spearhead. Okay. So with that being said, uh, all the bowlers, you know, performed very well, given the context. Like you know, bun bundling out Zimbabwe for 150 odd, giving us our biggest win margin, I believe, over Zimbabwe. Depleted Zimbabwe, but still, nevertheless, this is the best team they can, you know, they can put forward. Hopefully, by the next match, Craig Irvine, until, until I miss something, hopefully by the next match, Craig Irvine is going to be uh, fit. Alright, so, that being said, let me just briefly talk about the Mortaza situation. Y'all journalists, y'all need to stop poking this man. Like, you know, oh, oh, when are you going to retire? 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 I'm like, enough! How many times does he have to tell you he will retire when he feels like it? Or when the time is right? And yes, he knows. He knows that that emotional factor of Mortada being the lion heart of Bangladesh cricket and the fact that you know he might be starting to become a liability for Bangladesh cricket, it's starting to even out. Once the liability part overtakes the emotional part, then I believe he will retire. And yes, Najmul Hassan Tapon was very, very right in saying this. That the chances Murtaza got, a lot of other countries do not give their players this type of chances. So, Murtaza, was he treated unfairly by this regime? Absolutely not! In fact, Mortada, I believe, is he's being treated perhaps the best in this regime, in this Papon era. If they see fit not to select him for Pakistan, it would be understandable. Because Mortada, let's, let, let's be honest, he's at the, he's at the, not the twilight, at the end of the twilight. Of his career you know a after this you know there's only like black knights dark starless knights would I like him to be involved with Bangladesh cricket going forward absolutely absolutely in fact I want him to be like a, a bit of a manager role type of like a inspirational figure type of role a good guy you know to have around so Mortada will retire when you know, he feels the time is right. And I think a consensus with him and the board will reach the right decision. 
I mean, come on. Yeah, there is no replacement, but you can't rest on your laurels and believe that, yes, there is no replacement, so we're not going to create or try to create a replacement. We, you, you can't move forward with that mentality. That's not how progress is made. In fact, that is the recipe of stagnation. And in 2020, in everything, let alone cricket, stagnation is one of the worst things that can happen to you. All right, that's about it. Guys, let me know what you thought about this match in the comment section below. As always, hit like, subscribe, and bell notification. I really use your response as inspirations to make these videos even, you know, more frequently going forward. All right? This is the Reef Side, the Bengal Dragon, signing out.